simple journey, a beginning step into creative journaling or art journaling as some of you may know it. You find me on a, on a beautiful spring morning, the sunshine is, is really welcoming me to my world and I hope uh, it's somewhere, somewhere it's uh, welcoming you to yours. And I think that's what I'd like to start today with is just by saying welcome and hello. And um, it's something we, we rarely do, I think, is say hello face to face. We're so bogged down with technology and texting and uh, emailing that we give ourselves um, little face to face contact. And I think that's where I want to start today is for you to uh, think about if you were to come face to face with your creative bones, how would you greet them? Would you say, hi, hello, welcome to my world? Or would you say, uh, hey, you're not quite good enough? Or would you say, hey, you're not going to be able to do this? I don't think you'd say any of those things. I think you'd meet it and you'd probably want to embrace it and bring it into your life. And that's the kind of energy that I'd really like for you to start your process with me um, by doing. Um, I'm not going to waffle on for ages, I have a tendency to do that, you'll probably gather that the more that we go on this journey together, but I, uh, I will always begin by saying hello face to face before we get to work on the table. And today what we're going to do is simply use paint on watercolour paper and then once that's dry, use ribbon and string to create uh, something that's coined in the art journaling world, a zine. And a zine is a very simple, uh, short, small, little tiny flick through journal with ideas and colour and inspiration. And this is, I have a huge passion for creating zines. I have them all over my house, much to my poor husband's uh, annoyance. Anyway, I, I really want to see you have a go. Um, like I said in the first video, which if you haven't watched, do go and watch it. It would be lovely for you to see what this experience is all about for me and what I hope it's going to be about for you. But uh, I will put the link to my uh, Facebook page below in the comments. I'd love you to join up to the uh, Facebook page and if you do create your zine, pop some photos of it, pop some comments, perhaps come online when I'm live and say hi um, and ask any questions that you want to ask. But for now, I'm gonna uh, disappear into my working station, get my paints out and um, I'll meet you there. Bye. Hello and welcome to the table and to an absolute explosion of color these are the bare bones of the e-zine that we will be creating over the, uh, over the course of today. Can't wait to uh, hear what you make of this particular technique that I use all the time. And these papers, which I'm just going to flick through, most of which are double-sided, one of which I'm going to do with you today, these are the bare bones of our zine that we're going to create and the starting platform for a journey into your creativity. So I'm not particularly going to teach you how to be an art journaler. You already know how to do that. You just don't know you know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you um, a voice to your confidence to trust yourself and also give you the uh, volume button, volume button on your uh, critic who tries to stop you making a mistake. But actually, this technique I designed because I made a mistake. 
I spilled a load of paint on a board one day and I just took a print of it and it created these wonderful free-flowing um, almost watercolour paintings that I just love and I use them all the time in my journals on spare paper and to construct these little zines. So what are you going to need? You're going to need a sheet of cold pressed watercolour paper and in fact you're going to need maybe two or three depending on how big you're going to make your book. I'm going to make mine using two pages and the reason we use cold pressed watercolour paper and not warm pressed and there is a difference is that when you fold a cold pressed watercolour sheet you don't get the little uh, tacky ridges you get a clean fold and we need that when we're making a book because we don't want it to disintegrate on us so you're going to need that so two sheets um, this is a, a an a, a2 size a2 a2 size of cold pressed watercolour paper and this is just um, either a 250 a 225 um, weight watercolour paper you're going to need some form of surface which you're going to pour a lot of paint onto so it needs to be um, durable now um, these are some plastic boards that I managed to get uh, sometimes you can get these in art wholesalers um, if you don't want to spend the money on it, and that's another thing I want to say to you, is that this, this does not need to be an expensive venture. This can be, this can be feasible. So you can also use um, a chopping board, if you've got one, a plastic chopping board, not a wooden one, because the paint will soak into it. Um, and you could also use a cookie sheet, or in the UK we call those baking sheets. So you can use one of those as well. And the other thing you're going to need is a selection of um, just cheap acrylic paints to start with. And um, over here, guys, the, my UK friends, um, the range do a really lovely um, set of these paints that are, you know, £1.20, I think, each. Um, they're called Do Craft um, Acrylic Paints. And these are brilliant for using uh, in america i think you get these in michael's am i right and they're called folk art paints and they are um, just as inexpensive and just as good so these are your kind of cheap acrylic paints that I, I you know have a good stock of and if you're anything like me once you've got the bug on art journaling you start getting all this stuff and then you you kind of don't know what to do with it so get yourself um, a few of those if you just want to buy nine colors to start with that would be really good or if you've got a whole load then just have a whole load now then the other thing that I'm going to suggest you go out and buy is uh, one just one um, golden fluid paint. So I'm going to zoom in on this and just check that you can all see it. Now, golden, um, golden are quite an expensive brand of um, paint. I'm just going to show you the, the logo there. Whoop. Get it in focus. There it is. Okay, so golden are quite an expensive acrylic. Um, paint and they've just bought out this range called Golden Fluids and these are particularly nice to use with the technique that we're going to use today. They are however quite expensive so just buy yourself one, just treat yourself. Maybe instead of buying that cake and coffee today, go and buy one of these instead. Uh, you can get them online um, you can get them, I'm sure, in any art shop that you go to. So you want the fluid acrylics, not the big tubes. Let me see if I've got one of the big ones to show you. Yeah, I do. So this is the, this is the thick acrylic. That's not what you want for this technique. This, this would be a complete waste to do this technique with because we're going to water it right down. It's the fluid acrylics you want. And I shall bring that in and show you what we're going to do with it. So you also need some paint brushes um, and uh, obviously some water and you also need a separate jar of clean water and each time you take a new set of coloured splat prints you are going to need a different 
uh, a new set of water and that will become fairly obvious why as we go. The other things to have to hand that are useful are a, um, a little bit of um, kitchen roll, always useful. And uh, if you're not me, you will have put any animals out of reach. And I have my bearded dragon, which is the scratchy noise that you can hear, running around all over the floor. She's just woken up from her kind of winter slumber, so I'm letting her have a, have a run around. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to take our plastic board and we're going to take some colours. Now, I've already done one that was kind of blue and purple and I've done one that was greens and blues and I've done one that was orange and reds. So I'm going to choose a different colourway because, you know, we want to mix it up a bit. So what shall I use? Um... Do you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to do a bit of a darker one. So I'm going to use um, a brown, a black, a cream. Um, let's have a look. So I've got a white, I've got, um, what are, there's a denim blue here somewhere, mm, there, Baltic blue, I've got a black, I've got a cream, and I've got a brown, a French roast, so, you know, not the most colourful of colours, and but, you know, I'm going to get a lovely result from this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this blue teal fluid acrylic, when I come to do that part but let's let's get started so you're going to take whichever colors you want you know I've taken quite a few there but you could just use three just you know just start basic it doesn't really matter and this technique is going to really teach you about what colors mingle together and make brown I always say to my classes when I'm uh, running them from home um, you know learn for yourself don't read a book and learn it all that's kind of that somebody else has done that if you learn for yourself you tend to keep it in mind more and this doesn't matter if you get browns I've got browns on some of mine it doesn't really matter so we're going to start with our colors and uh, as I said I'm going to be using black and white but you're going to be using whatever colors and we're going to put on our board or our cookie sheet or our chopping board or whatever we're going to put some little kind of p-shaped blobs of our paint okay so I'm going to just zoom in so you can see one section of what I'm doing okay so there's my black this is my my kind of dark brownie color okay and now what I want is to bring in my uh, let's do the white I think and I'm going to want quite a lot of white if you're you if you get into the habit of using lots of dark colors then you need to balance that with more light colors and the reason is uh, simply put when you come to draw in your zine you want to be able to see what you're drawing and if you've got too many dark colors already you're not going to really put anything on top of it so you know let's let's lighten it up okay so I've got my colors there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my clean water and a decent brush and I'm going to put some water next to my lightest of colors and in this case it's my white so we're going to start with the white so start with your lightest of colors and I'm just putting those drops of water, I'm hoping you can see that, right next to my paint. And the benefit of using cheap acrylics is that you will see instantly what is going to happen, which is that the colour pigment in these cheap paints dilutes immediately and starts to flow into the water. So you can see that here where it started to flow. 
Okay, so then I'm going to get my brush and I'm going to mix the paint into the water. Okay, now don't be overly fussy about this. Don't kind of make it so, so uh, diluted that you don't have little lumps. I'm going to show you why on this one that I did earlier. Okay, so if you can see here and here, these were the sort of lumps that I hadn't diluted quite down here. And actually they end up looking like, um, I don't know, crazy planets or something. Okay, so again, I'm going into my paint. I'm tipping my paintbrush into the water first. And actually the other reason that I wanted to um, do this kind of black and white one for you is to really show you the contrast that will happen. And black and white obviously is brilliant for that. Okay, so I've oh, one there that I missed. So I've mixed all that up. Now I'm going to go back into my jar of water. And I'm going to put some paint near the next light one. Now if your water has got a lot of colour pigment in it already then you need to go and change that water. I'm just using white and black so it's not such a big issue for me but you know if you've got yellow in this water jar because you've been washing your brush out in it then you're going to need to go and change that water because as soon as you put that paint onto a different colour, I'm just going to bring this out again. As soon as you put a different colour, it's going to affect the, uh, the dilution of it. You'll see what I mean. Okay. So those have all got some uh, colour now. So now what I'm going to do is do exactly the same as I did. And look, you can see immediately what starts to happen. Now this here, this immediate movement of these paints is going to start to show you if you've used two colours that are going to make a brown. It's also going to show you if you've used two colours that are going to make a purple and two colours that are going to make a green. And I don't know if you can see clearly, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit here. This amazing, um, you know, the, as the water meets the, um, as, as each colour meets each other as each colour says hello and welcome to each other. These lovely pathways and ripples begin to be formed. Okay, so that's all my paint diluted. So now I'm gonna get a slightly smaller brush, like so, and I'm just gonna use it very gently to help the paints meet, meet each other a bit. Don't worry if you have some gaps, you know, mine have plenty of gaps. Just let those colours meet and play on your surface. Okay, so now the fun and the, the reason why um, I've suggested to go ahead and get yourself one of these and I'm going to keep the camera a little bit zoomed in because I really want you to see what happens. Now golden fluid acrylics the reason they're expensive is they've got a much higher colour pigment in them and what is less likely to happen is for them to dilute like these cheap ones did. However they do create these perfect little dots of colour with little rings around them. So I'm just going to splosh a few of those about on my page. Like 
like so. Okay, so I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey now of this piece. And you can see now there where those ripples are, where they're all forming. You've got plenty of time to play, to, um, to construct, to decide where you want colours to go because you've got lots of water in this and it's going to take a long time to dry. So the final step of playing with this paint, you can either leave it like that with those little blobs or you can get the end of a paintbrush or a stick and you can just um, pull these around a little bit. A scratching noise again, that's, uh, that's not me itching, <laughs> that's uh, my, my son's bearded dragon who has woken up this morning. The joy of spring has uh, entered into her little vivarium I think. Okay, so there's that. And what we're going to do is, ah, you see now I forgot something already. So we're going to have to be, we need this halved. So ideally you would have halved, you would have torn your A2 pages, your A2 watercolour pages in half already. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a print of this. Now, I actually, the first print of mine I'm going to do on the back of here. Each print you take, you're going to take a print um, on one side and then you're going to go and dry them in the sun or if you're indoors, dry them indoors. And then when they're dry on that side, you're going to turn them over and print on the other side. And it's quite nice to have a variety. So to have a green print on one side with a purple on the other or a green with an orange on the other. In this case, we're going to have a green with a black one on the back. So I'm going to just put my page down on top of that paint. And then don't um, be tempted to squish it flat. Just kind of walk your fingers gently over the colour and over the paint pigments. Just kind of be quite gentle and cautious with it. If you squash it hard, what you'll end up with is just a puddle. So we need to go quite gently and then when you lift that up you get these amazing amazing constructions and I'm just going to let that drip onto my page onto my board for a bit like so wow look at that I love it I'm always amazed by these and by what I begin to see straight away and I it's so much fun. So I'm going to take that and let that dry. And then of course we've still got tons of paint down here. So uh, let's take another print. So just gently pressing down and often like most things the second print is the best one yeah look at that now if you um if you end up with a bit of a void like uh, like over here you can just um put that down somewhere where you know there's a lot of paint pick that paint up There we are. Okay, so listen, I want, um, I'm going to not show you all of these. I'm certainly not going to show you the drying process. So I'm going to put these out in the sun to dry and then uh, I'll come back and show you what we're going to do next. So we're back on the table and it's now the afternoon. So it's a little bit darker in here, um, but I think you can still see Fair enough, without me putting the big lamp on. And uh, I just wanted to quickly recap what we've done so far. So we started off with um, two pieces of A2 paper. 
which is cold pressed watercolour paper. And we did some, um, some splodges of paint using cheap acrylics onto a plastic board or a cookie tray. And then we took some water and we diluted it down and then we took some prints. And uh, these prints have all now dried. So I've got some really good, a really good stock of pages um, that I can use for my zine, we're going to call it. And actually what I decided that um, I wanted to do is have an odd number of pages in my zine. Um, or shall I? No, I think I'll stay with the four. I'll go with the same as you. Um, and um, what we need to do now is just construct the zine and then we're going to be finished for today. And you guys, when you're finished, are going to want to start playing straight away. And um, that's okay because I will have put all these videos up at the same time so you'll be able to go on to the next step. But also just, um, just a little word of caution, take take each step gradually because what I'm hoping to do for you all is help you step into a different space with yourself, with your creativity, with your confidence, with your um, self-trust and your self-belief. So I, wanna, I want you to step into a new space with that and that takes time. And if you rush through step by step by step by step, you don't really digest or fully appreciate the lovely things that you have done. So um, anyway, coming back to our process, we've got these um, sheets of paper and now what I'm going to want to do is, is um, I've got you know six pieces here because I had more paper. I want to choose four that are all different. So I've got this black one that's on a green page, so I want that. I've got this purple with this orange, that's really nice. Um, I've got a green with an orange, so I'm going to have that one. And then I've got a purple with a green, I really like that too. So I'm going to grab those, so let's just check, one, two, three, four. Now what you'll find is that your paper will have stiffened up a little bit because it's now got lots of paint in it. Um, and that's not a bad thing. Now, people that make books a lot will tell you that you need waxed linen thread, that you need a braddle, that you need a proper threading needle, all those things. Um, we're not gonna use any of them because we're kind of coming back to the basics. We're not going into being book binders, we're just making a very simple thing for us to uh, play with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my um, my lovely old fashioned knit knitting needle holder and I'm going to grab myself somewhere in here this little red package that has some really th um, thin needles because I just want a thin thin one. Okay, so these are the double pointed knitting needles, but you can use any, anything that's got a sharp point at the end. And I mean, in fact, you could use a pair of scissors if you wanted to. The reason I like to use something that's more cylindrical at the end, not a pair of scissors, is because I want a clean hole. Okay, now I'm also going to get out a slightly thicker knitting needle or uh, another thing that will do the, exactly the same job, just leaning into my pen pot, is a, just a simple pen. Because what we're going to want to do now is just fold these pages in half. And use either the knitting needle or the pen to score the edges. Now if you have got a boning tool, which is the proper tool that does this, then please use that. So I'm going to fold it that way 
and then I'm going to open this back on itself and I'm going to fold it again okay so get your paper fold it in half fold it over one way and then fold it again and you can um, start to see as you fold these, these are going to be the pages of your zine. And you can already start to see the kind of exciting potential that you're going to have. The backgrounds that you're going to already have. So um, one thing that tends to frighten or be a bit daunting, both for newbies to any sort of journaling, or even to those of us that have been doing it for ages, the daunting thing is the blank page. Well, you won't have any of those in this book, I can promise you. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my pages together and apart from the one in the middle, I... I personally don't want to have two colours next to each other. So you can see this one's got orange on the inside, this one's got orange on the outside. I don't really want that to happen. So I'm just gonna, going to do that, like so. And in fact, I might even, yeah, that's nice. I'm gonna do that. And of course you're going to want to choose something for your front cover. I, I, everything of mine is purple. Everything. So I love purple. So I'm going to stick with my purple and I'm going to have a purple front cover. So that's going to be my front cover. And then we're going to be coming to the inside. And that's going to be our inside. Okay, so now we need a ruler, which of course I haven't got out ready. Let me just go and get that. Okay, so I've got my ruler. Just gave you a nice shot of my grey hair then. So apologies for that. So I've got my ruler and I'm going to start from the top here. And I'm going to work in centimetres using my black pen down the middle. From the top, I'm going to come down four centimetres and make a dot. And then from the bottom, I'm going to come up four centimetres. One, two, three, four, and make a dot. And then from my dots, and I'm working in towards the middle all the time, I'm going to come down another four centimetres. One, two, three, four, and make a dot. And again from this bottom one. One, two, three, four, make a dot. And then again from the top, you get the process, right? Two, three, four. And then from this one, one, two, three, four centimeters. Okay. And then you're gonna end up with six dots, three at the top portion, three at the middle. So then what I do is I take my my round knitting needle and this is again where it's a bonus to have um, cold pressed watercolour paper and not warm pressed because when I next when I do this it's less likely to rip so I'm just if you are a bit um, worried about poking yourself put some plasticine underneath your your page if not I tend to just hold my fingers like this slightly open so that I can push the needle through the through the gap so on my black mark I'm just going to push that through and give it a bit of a twiddle like so and I'm going to work all the way down making sure not to poke a hole in my fingers and I don't want you guys doing that either because you're going to need them 
and you can see you get a lovely I don't know if you can really see it on camera uh, let's see if I can focus it in but you get a really nice clean round mark when you use uh, a knitting needle okay so like so okay so I've got that line down there and now I'm going to want to make exactly the same holes on the other pieces and it would be really boring if we had to uh, use a ruler on all of them so just open your get your pages lined up along the crease and then take your pen and just go through the holes that you've already made and they should come through the page so just to show you again where the black marks are I'm holding my fingers like this so that I can push the needle in between my fingers that are underneath the paper okay so pushing it through giving it a little twiddle pushing it through giving a little twiddle all the way through okay now you're not going to want to see me do all of this so I'm going to pause the camera I'm going to do the rest and then I'll come back and show you what we're going to do okay so I have now put holes along the middle of all of my pieces and now for me is the most fun part of doing this um, the bare bones of our book and that is constructing it and having it fully finished well the the bare bones of it anyway and there's a number of different things that you can do you can go out and buy yourself some really expensive linen thread or some inexpensive linen thread in fact um, if any of you look on eBay or on that uh, app called wish you can often get some really cheap lovely linen thread but I like to use what's um, lying around the house. And I've got a number of things. This is some embroidery thread um, that's really lovely. This is some other embroidery thread that's kind of gold. This is some leather thong that will work just as well. Or the um, I've got some um, sari uh, ribbon, which um, you can buy online. So we've got all these different um, things that we can use and we can also use a mixture of all of them. So I think what I'm going to do is look at my outside cover um, and see which... Yeah, you see when I look at it I'm tempted to use either the brown or the purple. Will the yellow go? I don't think so. I think I'm going to use this purple. And I'm going to get a large eyed uh, sewing needle. I'm just going to sew this, push this uh, camera in so you can see what I'm doing. And some thread. And you want your thread to be at least three times the length of the book. And then we're going to start to sew it now. Different people do this bit differently. And there's all sorts of different stitches you can use for book binding. There's the Coptic stitch is the most common one. Because we're just doing a single... Um, now I've forgotten the name of the blooming thing. I'll have to remember later. Because we're just doing a single wadge of paper, let's call it that. 
a segment. Um, really, we don't need to do anything too fancy. We can just sew, and I'm going to sew a running stitch in, out, in, out, in, out, and then back up again so that I end up with a length of yarn. And you can either end up with a length of yarn that's dangling from the inside or a length of yarn that's dangling from the outside. Now, I am totally up for hanging beads and, um, you know, especially handmade beads off of these. And so personally, I'm going to start from the outside and it really is totally up to you what you choose to do. So let's see what we've got. We've got a hole here and the first few I tend to pull my yarn through each hole separately. It's only kind of when I get up to the third hole that they're all lying on top of each other nicely so that I can just poke through once. Okay, so I've got them all through the bottom hole and I want to hold onto this and just, just yank it a bit tight like that. Now, I'm going to put a slip knot in here, which is basically go round two fingers like so, so that the yarn crosses over. If I'll zoom in and then you can see. There we are. So I've gone over and the yarn has crossed over at my finger point there. I'm going to pick the loop off and then this bit of string comes across like that and you just take hold of that middle bit and pull it up so that you don't actually pull the thread all the way through. You end up with a loop and that loop is big enough to kind of secure it while we need to but also we can undo this easily at the end to put our beads on. Okay, so we got that first one done. So now we turn our book over and now we should hopefully be able to gently wriggle through till we come up the next hole like this. Give it a little gentle tug. And down and the the more you go up actually the easier it becomes because the um, the holes are now lining on top of each other and just just be careful that what you don't get tempted to do is just sew a new hole with your needle you know use the holes that you made because as soon as you start making lots of holes, that's when you make a almost like a perforation and that will tear. Okay, so we've gone up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down like that. And now we're going to come back down through these holes again. So that we get a continual line like so. They get a bit loose, just give them a give them a bit of a tug. Okay, now the last one, which is here, I want you to pull it up like so. And then your, your needle goes underneath. Let's zoom that in again. 
So we've pulled it up through the last hole. Our needle goes underneath the uh, stitch above. And then you're going to have a loop here, which you're going to push your needle through so that it kind of anchors itself. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. So the thread goes underneath and then through the loop. And then I'm going to push that back through the hole again. So this, this hole here has got the thread going through it three times. And then both of my uh, ends are on the outside of my book. And I'm just going to tie them together like so. And I don't want you to hang anything off of them yet. Just tie them in a bow so that those ends are out the way. Because we're going to, in a later show, we're going to make a bead that will be all yours to hang off of here. So now you can close your book like so. And you know what? It will have it will have little bumpy pages. They won't sit flat yet. They'll want to jump up. It's like a it's like an excitement. Ba-ding! Just wanting you to play. And um, yeah, so that's the beginning of our zine. That's class two done. You're finished. You can have a rest. That's what I'd like you to do. I am tempted to say that probably half of you watching this will dash over to uh, episode three, part three, and start playing with your journal. But uh, yeah, it's been really fun teaching you this class. I can't wait to see your little zines, or big zines actually, they're an A4 size. And uh, I look forward to you saying hello to your creativity. And I look forward to saying hello to your creativity. You know, as I said, um, please pop over to the Facebook page, the link's below. Um, and take pictures, chat, come and see me live, let me know what you're up to. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the uh, process. Speak to you soon. Bye.